Hello there and welcome to another video. Please do excuse the background noise, but it is quite a hot summer day outside for a change here and uh, there's a lot of neighbours and things out in the gardens and kids playing, so that's what the noise is if you can hear it. But anyway, let's get on to the matter at hand which is this video. This is another one of my pickup videos. This has come quite close to the last one, unlike the first one I did, because I've got quite a lot of good stuff this weekend. So um, I'll quickly go over it because there's a lot here, like, not so much there's a lot, but there's a lot of big stuff that it's hard to get in shot. So I'm just going to quickly summarise what there is and then I'm going to move some of the stuff out of the way and focus on individual things. So I'm also having to do this freehand because I can't fit it all in frame using the stand for my phone. Anyway, I've got first of all this here, which is a rack sleeve case that somebody sort of made into a box, as you can see it's got like wood in the bottom. This is designed for in a recording studio or uh, an ins permanent install. It's a flight case that you can't put a lid on. It's designed to hold rack mount equipment like this here. And somebody has used it as a storage box and the guy just said, oh what the box, yeah. That cost me £2, which is brilliant. I think it's 6 or 8 U. We'll get to that in a moment. Um, I've also got some double metal clad sockets. They have got some holes been drilled in them in the back, but that's not a problem for me. What I do with these is I make power distribution boards. So you get a piece of wood and you mount some sockets along on it. You put 16 amp C4 in and outs. And uh, I use them for outdoor events, sorts of festivals and things like that, stage power. They're really good because they can take a good beating and they don't get cracked or damaged. This is an extra one that I picked up, which is a double 13 amp socket, which has got neons in it, so it lights up, the switches light up as you turn it on. I actually picked this up because we have got five or six of these already installed in the kitchen, and they are oldish, pretty old sockets, but uh, it's good to have an extra one for spare or whatever else if one of them goes bad because they are quite old. Now I've also got here a BT Open Reach uh, fibre modem as you would call it, well sort of fibre, BDSL so if you get something like BT Infinity or one of the other sort of Sky or Talk Talk broadband you used to get one of these not so much anymore but this is a Hawaii Echo Live HG612 version 3B which is the latest one I think they did of it and it's basically just got a DSL input two Ethernet ports by default only one of these works battery backup option there and a powered input now you can flash the firmware on these to have control over your line, view the line stats uh, and set them up in all kinds of different ways normally they're locked to VDSL but I use them on ADSL, I've got one just here that's currently churning away on a standard broadband connection, a non fibre one and uh, the the good boxes to have because you can use them with PSNs and other third party routers and that was two pounds as well these sockets were a pound each now I've got a stack of hard drives here these are various sizes I think they go up from 250 or 300 gig all the way up to 500 these were one pound each the guy just had a box load of them I bought I don't know two four six seven of them I was going to buy more but you don't know with hard drives you know how, how they've been thrown around in that box when people have been rummaging things like that so they a pound each can't really lose on them even if I get one maybe two working I've got all my money back from them anyway so I imagine I'll get at least one working one I'll have to try them I'll show you that process as well uh, I've got here a effects unit this is a Yamaha SPX92 this is a pretty legendary and popular effects unit for studios, live sound, stuff like that. It's a one new rack mount unit. This cost me £10. These sell for around about £150. But with the age of them and they're prone to, the caps in the power supply is going. So they need changing. And they have a watch battery on the board, but like a, a soldered in one, not a replaceable one. And they also leak. So that'll need doing, I think. And then the last big item here is this computer tower, which I just randomly picked up. I mean, I don't do so much computer repairs and things as much as I used to anymore, but this was four pounds. So for four quid, it's, I mean, obviously the casings leaves a lot to be desired. It's got a DVD writer in there. I'd say it's a light on one. 
It's Asus on PC, it says Intel Celeron on Windows 7. Oops. It came with the power cable and a VGA cable, which are really not worth much. But for £4, this thing was a steal. I mean, it's got a Windows 7 license sticker on it. And I did look through the side, and I spotted what looks like a Asus motherboard, possibly Gigabyte. It's got two sticks of RAM, and it's got the hard drive installed, which you can see just about there. That's the hard drive. So it is a full system. I believe it's DDR3. And I think it might be socket 1150 or 1155 or something like that. Uh, I can't remember exactly which one, but I have a feeling it may be. It could be socket 775 processor, but we'll see. I mean, for £4, I can't lose on it with everything that's come through. So there's got to be something worthwhile in there. Alright, so there's a brief look over at everything anyway. I'm going to start with this case, I think, and try and pull this wood out and return it to how it should be, then I can use this to, to store things. Um, but yeah, I'm going to do the case first, so let me move the other stuff out of the shop. Okay, so you can see now this is the front of the case, the right side of it, and they've sort of put this wood in. This is the strips that you would put captive nuts in, and then you screw into to hold the equipment in. So we can see it's one, two, three, four... Five, six, seven, eight. So this is an 8U, 8 unit case. And I'm just going to try and push this out. I don't think they've secured it. So if I can get it out like that, then it'll be brilliant. So there we go. It's just a piece of old backing off a cupboard or something. And that's out of the way. So now... We're left with the case as it should be. I can see there's some screw holes in it. Along the bottom, looks like it's had casters on it, or wheels. And then also, on the other side, there are screw holes at intervals all the way down both sides. Where it looks like they've had something else screwed or fixed to it. I don't think it was another rack strip, because the one at the front is fixed onto the actual metal piece, not the wood. So, maybe it was a hinge or something, if they had a door or something on it. But who knows. But all in all, for £2, you couldn't buy, well, components of the case. Never mind a whole case. I was looking for one of these not so long ago, for the studio. And they were like £80 plus to get older one. Now I've got one just through waiting, so I'm just going to put this in to sort of show you. That's like how you have your equipment in, and that will go all the way down there. You can also use these for servers, networking equipment, sort of Ethernet switches, firewalls, stuff like that. Anything really, there's a wide range of it. You can also use uh, video equipment, stuff like that. But that's that, I'm going to get this out of the way now and we'll move on to the next thing. So whilst I started with the case, I figured I may as well do the audio uh, FX unit for in it next. So this is the SPX92. Uh, I've just noticed as well there's a chip in the top of the plug here, but that's never here nor there. Plugs are cheap. Um, it's in fairly good condition, cosmetically, looking at the front of it. I've actually got another one of these, but the front buttons are a bit dodgy on it. And uh, I had to also recap that and change the memory battery in it when I got that and I paid £45 for that one and it's a lot more beat up than this um, so yeah let's just spin it around and look at the back quickly you can see we've got a remote MIDI in and through output with a switchable level minus 20 plus 4 dB left right stereo output and I'm on a input plus 4 minus 20 alright so I've spun the SPX back around and we're gonna plug it in and just see what happens if anything so well, it's not blown up yet, so that's a good sign. There's not much of anything in the way of power. Perhaps the fuse has gone in the plug. Let me crack the plug open and have a see. Or perhaps the fuse has literally entirely gone in the plug and he's not present. So let me go get a fuse dead quick and then we might actually get some power out of this thing. Okay, I've got a 5 amp fuse. A 3 would probably be better, but this will do for the minute. So let's just screw this back together. 
and try again. Still nothing. So that doesn't look too good. Let's just make sure this wiring is in properly. Which it seems to be making enough contact. Alrighty then. Well that's a bit interesting and we'll need some more investigation I think. So I'll come back to that probably in another video. I don't want to put too much in this one video so uh yeah that's a uh, no but for the money i'm sure we'll be able to fix this thing there can't be that much wrong with it next item okay so this is the next thing i'm gonna look at now i'm not gonna go in and try these all in this video i'm gonna go through and make another video on how to check the health of the hard drive uh, see how long it's got left to live roughly sort of work out where they are because obviously with drives you don't necessarily if you've not owned them since new you don't know how much they've been abused in the past and um, I mean they could have bad sectors things like that so I'll show you how to check all that out in another video and I'll check each one of these and we'll see how I did but I've got a Samsung 320 gig all of these are SATA by the way I've got a Seagate 500 gig I've got a Hitachi Desk Star 320 gig. Some of these are quite old, some of them are newer. I've got a Seagate Barracuda 300 gigabyte. I've got a Seagate Barracuda 300 gigabyte again. I've got a Seagate Barracuda 500 gigabyte, another one of those. And I finally got a Seagate Barracuda 300 gigabyte again. So I've got three of this drive. Two of this drive, and one each of the Hitachi and the Samsung. Feel free to place your bets and uh, guesstimates down in the comments as to which drives you think are going to work out of these. And I'll also have a link in the description to the video where I show you what works and what doesn't on these and how to check hard drives. So check that out soon, that will be coming up shortly after this video. Okay, so already we're at this point where it's the last thing, which is this Zoo Storm Tower. Now I'll quickly show you around the back of it. This is a little rusty at the back, as you can see here, especially around the VGA. So it has been somewhere damp, it's been kicked in or something at the back or pushed on, maybe dropped, who knows. But anyway, uh, I've noticed there's no rear fan in it or anything, that might be something from the factory, but I would really fit an exhaust fan if I was building systems like this. Anyway, let's get it open. So the side panel's on thumb screws. I've not actually opened the casing on this yet, and I didn't open it before I bought it because uh, obviously that wasn't something I wanted to do on the stall and it was only four pounds anyway so I look see what I could through this side panel so with the side panel removed it's now a lot more apparent our hard drives here we've got their own brand Zoo Storm power supply that's a 300 watt total supplies 12 amps on the 12 volt rail so not much use for a graphics card or anything then I'm looking at this here fan. This is a bit strange. It's a, a, a CASA fan, like an 80mm case fan, slapped onto the CPU heatsink cooler. And it's also sucking through and blowing out the side this way, instead of blowing down and cooling the VRM and everything else on the board. So that's a bit strange. It's quite dusty as well, like quite very dusty. You can see the motherboard model here. It is a P5G41T-M LX2 slash GB. That's quite a long model number. Uh, we've got SATA drives installed to it. There's two sticks of memory, which of course are. I did see those through the side. So let's just pop these out and have a see. Hopefully it's DDR3. Okay, this is Corsair. It's XMS3, but without the heat spreader. And this is 1333, which will be DDR3, and it's a 2 gig stick. So that means we've got 4 gigs of Corsair RAM in here, which is not bad at all. That itself, providing it works, is worth around about, I don't know, £15 or something. Anyway, 
uh, hard drive. Let's see if I can see. It's a WD Blue, Western Digital. You can see the sticker there. I don't really want to unscrew it, so I'm going to try and sort of jiggle it around to see. Not that this is going to work on camera. It's a 500 gigabyte. I can just see the writing on it there. You can just about see it on camera, maybe. So that's that. And I don't think there's a lot more to it, really. Uh, I can't see on the board. Usually it'll be wrote somewhere as to what socket the board is. But I can't see that jumping out from anywhere. Oh no, I do see it. It's in fact up here at the top. Just there. It says LJ775. You can see it here. So unfortunately it is a socket 775 board. Which is a shame. I was hoping it would have been something a little more modern that I could have put uh, a Core i3, i5, i7, whatever it is. But nevertheless, for the money, I'm sure that it's a... Well, if it works, it's a decent board looking at it. And I could probably put something like a Core 2 Quad in here without too much of a problem. Maybe, uh, well, try and upgrade this RAM definitely. Uh, I'm going to plug this in quickly and see if anything comes out of it and then I'll conclude this video. Okay, so I'm just going to shoot this freehand because it's much easier. Uh, but the system's plugged in, I've just got a keyboard, the VGA and the power. I'm going to turn that on. It was already on, never mind. And uh, we'll just plug this thing in and see if it blows up or works. have got two choices. So, there's power. Oh, we have fans. Oh, and it stopped. Maybe it'll dual boot. Some AZ boards sometimes like to do that. I don't think there is a buzzer or beeper, so if it is giving out postcodes, I don't know what they are. I won't be able to hear them. I'm just going to try reseating the RAM. Okay, so let's try again. I've took the RAM out and put it in again. The problem being that I took it out, it's quite dusty in there, there could be some crap got into the slot. We're going in for a second try again. What I am hearing though is the power supply, sp uh, the hard drive spinning up. So it sounds like the drive's working. The system's fans running and things seem to be going through the motions. They're just not actually coming on. So I'm going to try a few things and see what solves the problem. Okay, so actually it turns out I've just wasted a bit of time messing around. Um, the problem was the VGA cable that came with this, that I for some reason decided to use on this monitor. The VGA cable was bad. The system actually works fine. I've actually just disconnected the front USBs, audio, the SATAs, everything but the front on off and the power supply, one stick of RAM, and it still wouldn't power on, like come to life on the screen. But I noticed then that the number lock light came on on the keyboard, which meant the computer was doing something. Now this is the reason I hate people that build these systems and stuff like this. They use boards that haven't got buzzers on the motherboard, and they don't install one. Because you just can't tell what it's doing, unless it's in front of you on the screen. Uh, but anyway, I've put everything back in as it was, and it in fact seems like the system did work. So let's just... Turn it on. It does do that sort of double post where it comes on, off, then on again and actually starts up. I've not actually looked at anything on the screen, I've just seen it flash up and then was like, right, take the power out and I'll show this off. BIOS is usually F2 on Aziz board, so now the number lock lights come on, I'm just going to keep pressing F2. Oh, it's asking to start Windows 7, I don't want to do that, let me restart. Let's try delete instead. Okay, we're in the BIOS. That took a lot of delete tapping and smashing. So, um, we can see the hard drives there, the eye has DVD drives there. Let's just go to system information. It is a Celeron E3500 at 2.7 gigahertz. 
with 4 gigs of RAM detected. So that's great. Let's just discard and exit. And in order, it will try and start Windows. But I'm just going to turn this off. Because if you receive a computer uh, like this second hand and it's got people's information on, you shouldn't really be going through it. You should erase this hard drive because, well, they should erase this hard drive really, but they don't. So then it's up to us to not go through the information that's on there, which there could be anything on there. I don't care, that's not mine. I just erase these with um, DBAN or something like that, or I do a long format on them, and then put on another version of Windows or whatever else I'm going to do with it. So, yeah, this system works. That's a good outcome. I'm happy with that. I wish it would have been a more modern motherboard. And also, I just thought when I was playing with it and trying to get it to come on, why did I not realise when I read the motherboard model out and it had G41 in it that it was going to be 775 because that's the G41 chipset. Anyway, that's uh, how this weekend's gone for you. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave a like down below. If you've got any questions, feedback, comments, anything, down below, comment section, speak to me. I'm usually there. I will check and read all the comments that are left on my videos. Also, you can follow me on Twitter, Facebook, a lot of other stuff. Um, there'll be links to that down below on my channel as well. And subscribe to see future pickup videos, tech videos, and other random things like this one. And also, if you want to see the video on the hard drives, be sure to watch my channel for that. See you in the next one.